Welcome to the Friday Night Spirit of Prophecy Church Bible Study, and I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to be doing this in the month of June. Uh, it's good in a Bible study to take off. Every once in a while, I find I've been doing Bible studies since, what, 1984 or something like that, and one of the ways you ruin a Bible study is by trying to continue it year-round. I don't know what it is. I'm just telling you that's the way it is. You just got to take a, a break from a Bible study every once in a while. And we find the best time to do it is during the summer when you know the kids are out of school and things are busy and stuff like that. So we're not going to do a Bible study during the month of June. We plan to come back probably, Lord willing, in July. Okay, so let's start with prayer. As before we start reading the Bible, we always start with prayer because it's not just ink on paper. And we can't just understand it by reading it. We have to understand it by the Spirit of God. So we start with praise. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee when thy judgments are made manifest. Wisdom and might are yours. You change at the times and seasons, you removeth kings and setteth up kings. You giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. You reveal the deep and secret things, you knoweth what is the darkness, the light dwelleth with you. Lord, you did say that wherever two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. So Lord, we know that you're with us tonight. And Lord, we gather because we want to understand your word. And we ask you to show us the deep and secret things, help us understand what you're saying, and especially in the things we're reading tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I prayed about it, and my prayer was, Lord, I don't know the future. I don't know. Only you know the end from the beginning. Only you know what we really need to be reading tonight. And so, Lord, I ask you to show us what we should really be reading. And I was impressed to go back and read the extra visions and dreams that were given to Demetri Dudeman. You may, you may say, well, that's not Bible. Well, Bible, the, verse, or the, the verses and the chapters and the books in the Bible were decided by some learned men of God, and they were trying to find out what to put into it, what God had said. Well, I believe, and most people agree, that what was spoken to Dimitri by the angel Gabriel and the other angels that came to him is still the word of God. Now, it's not in the Bible, but I do believe it's the word of God, and I believe it's what we need to be studying tonight. So we're going to start with that. And hopefully I can get this down a little bit better tonight. So we're going to start with reading the warning, and then we're going to go past that. It was late at night. I couldn't stay inside because of the smell. I was sitting outside on a rock. I'm trying to do this the best way. Okay, I'll go with that. Sitting outside on a rock. So this is August the 3rd, 1984, when he first arrived in America. The light came toward me. The fear of cars came within me. The Romanian police tried to run me over the cars, and that's why I jumped. The light surrounded me, and out of the light, I heard the same voice. Dimitri, why are you so despaired? Why did you punish me? What other do so rotten? Why did you bring me to the United States? I have nowhere to lie on my head. I can't understand anybody. Dimitri, didn't I tell you that I'm here with you also? I brought you to this country because this country will burn. <laughs> well, then why did you bring me to this country just to burn? Then, Dimitri, have patience. I will tell you. Get beside me. He said, I don't know what it was, brothers. And I asked him about it. He's kind of like a big pillow on fire. He said, the only thing I remember is he controlled it with his left hand. And in a moment of time, it took and showed him all of California. The cities of California, Las Vegas. You see what I've shown you? This is Sodom and Gomorrah. And one day it will burn. It's sin has reached the Holy One. And he took and showed me another great city. You see, do you know what city this is? No, this is New York City. Sodom and Gomorrah. And one day it will burn. He showed me Florida. Sodom and Gomorrah. One day it will burn. He didn't let me say another word until he brought me back to where we'd left. He said, now, Dimitri, you can ask me questions. He said, I brought you to this country, Dimitri, because I want to wake up a lot of people. I love this country. I love the people of this country, and I want to save them, but America will burn. 
He said, how can I save them? I can't speak their language. Who knows me? How will they call me? Don't worry. I will be ahead of you. I'll make great healings among the American people. You go to television stations, radio stations, and churches and tell them everything I tell you. Don't try to hide anything because if you try to hide anything, I will punish you because America is burn, will burn. Well, how will America burn? It's so powerful. He said, the Russian spies have discovered where the most powerful nuclear missiles are stored in America. The fall of America will start with an internal revolution in America started by the communists. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. The government will be busy with the internal problems. Then from the oceans, Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, and two other countries who cannot remember will attack. The Russians will bombard the nuclear missiles in America, and America will burn. Well, what will you do with the church? The church has left me. How? Don't you have any people here? Well, people in America honor people. The honors to be given to God, they give to other people. He said, you see, Americans think high of themselves. They say, I serve God, but they don't. In the church, there's divorces, adultery, fornication, sodomy, abortion, all kinds of sin. Jesus doesn't live in sin. He lives in holiness. I brought you here so you could cry out loud. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Tell them to stop sinning. God never stops forgiving. Tell them to repent. He will forgive them. Tell them to start preparing themselves so they can save them in the day of trouble. He says, if you call me to speak, God loves you. That's what the angel of God told me. Whoever I love, I want to wake up. I will put on the hearts to call you. Don't hide, don't hide anything or I'll punish you because America will burn. Tell them to stop sinning and repent. He will forgive us. And we will have salvation. Well, how will you save the church if America will burn? Tell them exactly as I tell you. As he saved the three young men from the oven of fire and Dan from the mouth of the lion, that is how I'll save them. But you must tell them to stop sinning and repent. I bless this country because of the Jews that are here. I haven't, uh, I haven't have about 7 million Jews here. They haven't tasted war or persecution, and God has blessed them more than anyone else. And instead of thanking God, they started sinning and doing wickedly. Their sins have reached the Holy One, and God will punish them with fire. Israel doesn't recognize the Messiah because they're placed, placed their trust on the power of the Jews in America. But when God will hit America, all the nations will be terrified. God will raise up China, Japan, and many of the nations. And they'll go against the Russians and defeat the Russians and back to them to the gates of Paris where they'll sign a peace treaty, but they make the Russians the leader. With all the nations of the Russians as the leader, by the way, that gives you a hint where the Antichrist might come from, okay? All the nations of the Russians as the leader go against Israel. It's not that they want to, but God makes them. Israel doesn't have the help of the Jews in America anymore in their terror. When they see what is coming, they call upon Messiah. Messiah will come, into the help the, uh, will come to help Israel, then the church of God will meet him in the clouds. Are you ready to meet Jesus Christ? Are your wedding clothes clean? If there are spots in your clothes of your soul, the blood of Jesus still has power to cleanse sins. Jesus Christ will live with the church on Mount of Olives. He himself will fight against all the nations. I said, well, if you are the angel of God, then everything you tell me must be read in the Bible. If it's not, I can't tell the Americans. Tell them to read Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 8 through 15. He calls it the mystery Babylon, the great adulteress, also Revelation 18, the whole chapter. There it says clearly what will happen to America. Well, why did he name it the mystery Babylon? Tell them. Because all the nations of the world immigrated to America, and America accepted them. America accepted Buddha and the devil church, the sodomite church, the Mormon church, and all kinds of wickedness. America was a Christian nation, but instead of stopping them, they went after their gods. Because of this, he named it the Mystery of Babylon. Now, so that you know that I've truly been sent by God, tomorrow at 9 o'clock, someone will come to give you a bed. At 10.30, someone will come and pay your rent. At noon, someone will bring you a car and a bucket of honey. Brothers, he said, it happened exactly as the angel said. At 9 o'clock, someone rang my doorbell and said, I brought you a bed. I cannot sleep all night long. God told me you're from Romania and you need a bed. At 10.30, Someone else rang my doorbell, handed me a check for $500, and said, God told me to bring you $500. At noon, someone came and gave me a car. Sitting on the seat was a bucket of honey. I'm going to skip the next part. Let's go to the next one. April 21, 1995, the beast strikes. I fell asleep sometime around midnight. About 2 a.m., I heard a loud voice saying to me, Dimitri, wake up. I'm going to show you something. Even though I was ill, I jumped to my feet without realizing I was awake. Then I realized 
I wasn't even in Romania more. I was in America. A powerful voice, a voice spoke sternly to me. Why have you become discouraged? Why did you try to question God, thinking in your heart that I'd left you? Why do you keep so much sadness in your heart and such great mourning because I took your wife? Why have you allowed yourself to become discouraged so that you'll no longer be able to work for, more, for me as you have until now? This is why I've come to you, to show you a revelation, which you must tell the American people, which is why we're doing this tonight. It's important that we know this. The voice boomed at me, telling me to look to the right. I was not awake. Not, I was awake. I was not sleeping. I was standing a term ahead as ordered. When I looked, I saw there was a great flock of black birds with very sharp, large beaks. Out of the beaks came a blinding light. Now, let me just tell you, I believe that these are Russian airplanes. Out of the front of the airplane comes a some kind of like a laser. And, uh, excuse me, out of, out of the back comes a laser. Out of the front comes a blinding light. Probably this is some kind of new way that the Russians have to defeat our radar invisible airplanes and missiles. In other words, it blinks a real, real bright light, which the plane can see, and then it uses a laser in the back of the plane to destroy it. That's just a guess. When I looked, I saw there was a great flock of blackbirds with very sharp, large beaks. Out of the beaks came a blinding light, which you could barely look at. From their tails, I saw flames of fire shooting out. I became frightened. I rubbed my eyes thinking I was asleep and dreaming, but I was neither sleeping nor dreaming. This flock of birds suddenly turned into airplanes that did not make any noise. Okay, okay, wait a minute. How do you get an airplane not to make any noise? If you've got a prop or a jet, makes noise. Unless they're using anti-gravity advanced technology. So it's telling us Russia is advanced, advanced to our technology. The flock of birds suddenly turned to airplanes that did not make any noise. American airplanes would go up trying to attack, but as soon as they would draw close, it would fall to the earth in a blaze of fire. Once again, I heard the voice, but I could not see who was speaking to me. And the voice said, look higher than the black planes. When I looked above the planes, I saw a helicopter, which hovered above them. On the side of the helicopter was a plank, you know, like on a ship where soldiers were lined up. They were all dressed in black, all armed the same and about the same size. From the center of the helicopter, a platform began to rise up. It rose higher than the helicopter itself. On the platform was a throne. The Pope was on the throne, yelling with a loud voice. I have been given the power to rule the earth and fight against the Protestants that I may overtake them. As I watched him with terror and fear, because he was surrounded by a powerful voice, which was, which was formed by planes and personnel, suddenly a white cloud appeared and covered them. So I could no longer see anything, and out of the midst of the white cloud came a man dressed in shiny clothes, wearing his shiny crown on his head, and he spoke to me and said, His voice sounded like thunder. When I heard his voice, I fell to the ground. He said, remember everything I, you have heard, everything you've seen, everything you will hear. Tell my people because, once again, I want to work with you more than I have until now. The armies and the planes that you saw and the beasts that sat on the helicopter, these are the Catholic powers, which will overtake the holy. Remember, Revelation says, and it was given him to make war with the beast and to, uh, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Revelation 18. The armies and the planes you saw in the beast that sat on the helicopter, these are the Catholic powers which will overtake the holy, that the words prophesied in Revelation may come to pass. The majority of my people will be overtaken and trampled because their lives are not clean before their Lord. Tell this message to them. See why we're reading it? Do not be quiet. For if you're quiet, I will punish you because the churches are fraudulent or counterfeit and fake. They live a life with their heart's desire, with their hands stained in blood and adultery and sodomy, worshiping, worshiping strange and foreign gods, things like putting Christmas trees in the church, doing Easter egg hunts at the church. Okay? That's all pagan. Because they have forsaken the true God, he's allowed them to go their way of their heart's desire. Now tell them, cry out loud. Tell them to stop treading the paths of their desire, to repent with all their hearts, so that in the day of the beast's anger, I may be able to save them so they will not deny me. So they will not deny me. Meaning, sad to say, most Christians will deny him. The time is very short and the army of their salvation is already prepared. Again, he spoke to me. Look to your right. When I looked, I saw a vast army with my eyes could not encompass. And 
Bree Keaton saw the same thing. And I think Maurice Sklar also saw the same army. Vast army my eyes could not encompass. This is the army I'm prepared to save my people from the beast's grasp. Do not forget to tell them the words I've told you. I will give you a spirit of remembrance. The voice continued speaking to me. I will come and bring you more revelations about the times of the ends. Then again, I heard a thunder. Then the white cloud and the being disappeared. I was so terrified, I was unable to sleep the rest of the night. Mm. I think I'm going to skip that one. 1997. Oh, by the way, in case you want to get a copy of what I'm reading here, all of these are available in a book. Let me see if I can show you here. Hang on. I think I got this prepared to show you. There we go. There. I think you're looking at it. Let me confirm that. Yeah. Okay. So this is God's warnings to America. You can get it at prophecyclub.com. It has a prophecy. It has all of the testimony of Dimitri Dudem and all of his dreams and visions, plus Michael Boldea, Leslie Johnson, Henry Grieber, Shane Warren, Terry Bennett. Not all of them, because the very, very new ones, of course, we don't have. But most of them, yeah. Also, I recommend while you're get my book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy. Assuming I've got someone watching this that doesn't know, let me explain. So in 2017, I memorized the book of Revelation. I got 30 revelations, two visions, and an audible voice, which showed me the word first fruits is a secret door that links the feasts of Leviticus to the prophecies in Revelation. One prophetic word, this guy didn't even know I'd written a book, said there's a word, there's a lock I put over a word in the book of Revelation. I'm going to open it to you. It will turn many books written on the end time message into obsolete books. Also, you can get that at Prophecy Club. Also, Miss the Mark, which is the number one seller. It's a short, quick read, simple, designed to hand to somebody. Maybe they don't even know about Jesus. But if they read the first three or four pages, they'll probably finish the book. If they read the book, they will not take the mark of the beast. This shows them what the mark of the beast looks like, what the number of his name looks like. Again, prophecyclub.com. This one is the book of Daniel, the things that people need to know that find themselves in the tribulation need to know. Here's the one we're talking about tonight. And also I wrote a book here on how pre-trib one, which shows you the truth about the rapture. Now let's go back to what we're, oh, I guess I should also say, um, well, when you go to prophecyclub.com, there's an offer up there where you can get 40 books for a hundred bucks. That's the very best deal. Might be even the best deal we've ever had. Okay, let me jump back over here. Let's go back to the screen. Okay, so a great bear. 1997, two days before taking my father to hospital, I heard his voice in the early morning hours. This is his daughter. I saw something. As usual, I got my recorder and went to his bedside, but he wouldn't let me record it. I don't remember everything he said, but I would like to share with you what I do remember. He said, the Lord showed me a very large bear that would be Russia. It was, it was as big as a building and began to do battle with an unarmed man. That would be NATO. Do you see what I've shown you? This is how it would be when the hardships come over America. No one would be able to defend her. Only those that trust in me will be spared. Everything will start as a heavy rain on a sunny day at a time you least expect it. There was more, but I do not remember the rest. Okay, so we'll continue. Now the bear awakes. I read this the other day on the program. I think I'll skip that. Uh, three comments vision, again given to Dimitri Dudeman's daughter, Virginia Boldea. Suddenly I began to see even though my eyes were shut. I saw an immense flower garden. The flowers are tall as a man with a, a healthy stem, but the buds were blue and bent forward. Every flower had only one bud. A cloud suddenly appeared near the garden and appeared to be very close to the ground. A man dressed in white stood on the cloud. He was slightly taller than a normal man, and in his hand he had a trumpet in which he began to blow. The sounds that came out of the trumpet would turn into letters, which would then turn into words in the sky, then ignite, burning up in the heavens. I didn't understand the writing because it was an unknown tongue. I did, however, recognize that it was Hebrew. There were a handful of comets in the sky which looked to be peaceful. Suddenly, three of them, all different sizes, begin to head toward Earth. 
when they hit the ground, there was total devastation. This is probably what it from Reed, uh, Rodriguez saw. Probably the meteor that just there's a split in 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 the heavens, and a meteor that was not there all of a sudden now is there. And there's no time. I mean, with a probably 15, 20 minutes is here. No time to prepare. As I looked up, the sky turned black and I saw thunder. The thunder was so black, the dark cloud filled up and it began to rain. When I looked closer, I could see it was not rain, but drops of blood. As I looked to my left, I saw another man standing under the cloud. He was very tall, dressed in white with his hands raised high. Each time he moved his hands, fireballs would come out of his fingers. I looked awestruck at the man's height and the way his face shone and radiated. Then a powerful voice said, remember what I've shown you. This will be the beginning of the pain that I will allow upon the earth. He repeated this phrase again, after which he stood to me and said to me, remember what I've shown you. This will be the beginning of the pain that I will allow upon the earth. You prepare yourself, be strong and draw close to me with fasting and prayer. For I will come to show you more things, more terrifying than these and everything disappeared. I'll skip these verses. Now let's go to Israel and America, November 22, 1995. It was as if I was in Israel, Dimitri said. A tall man, that would be an angel, took me by the hand and said, Come, let me show you the holy city. When we reached the holy city, all was covered in black netting from the top to the bottom. On the top at its peak, the city had a black flag. After seeing these things, I asked the man that was with me, What does this mean? Look up. And you will see the meaning, he said. When I looked up, I saw a black emblem, emblem on which there was gold writing, and it said, Israel, you dishonor me and you mock me. You trust in the powers of men. Because you will not return to me, I have this against you, and I will punish you with great fury. This is also to purify some who want to call, call upon me with a clean heart. The shame and blasphemy that they have caused has reached heaven. After I read these things, the man standing beside me said, let us leave this place, or we got caught up in the wrath. It seemed I was settling on an airplane, an American airplane, which was about to land with me in California. Now, here comes an important part. When I was about to disembark, I heard sirens, loudly, loudly howling, and a great sound of many planes, engines heard. The man beside me said, the punishment draws closer. Look closely and read. When I looked up, I saw a written scroll appear before my eyes. The writing was in, in Romanian. And it said, American people, those of you who have dishonored and mocked me, you who have brought, brought hatred and blasphemy against my name throughout the world, for these things my vengeance draws closer. As for my children, those who have worshipped me with all of their hearts, I will fight before them, and I will give them the victory and safety. I will separate those who have worshipped me from those who have not, as I separated Goshen and Egypt. I tried to read it one more time, but I could not. The reading gathered into the scroll. Then the noise of the air engines grew even louder. The man beside me turned to me and said, These are planes loaded with atom bombs, and no one and nothing will be able to stop them. I'll read that again. These are planes loaded with atom bombs, and no one and nothing will be able to stop them. So we're not talking about just a few bombs. We're not even talking about the top 100 cities. I mean, they is reported that Russia has 8,000 nuclear bombs. One would destroy our nation. Ten, little would be left. A hundred? Probably it's a lot more than a hundred. If the planes were, were so thick that it darkened the clouds, as he says on another one, that's a lot of bombs. Then suddenly the great number of black planes lifted off the ground like a flock of birds. I knew the planes were American, but I had no knowledge of what their purpose was or what they were supposed to do. Then the written scroll was thrown before me, and I stepped closer to pick it up. But when I drew near, I saw it burned with a blue flame. The flame began to climb into the sky, and as I looked at the flame, I heard a voice coming from it saying, My word is righteous. I am the Christ who has brought this news to you. Do not be quiet. Tell the American people all that I have told you. And all I reveal to you ahead of time for the destruction which is coming over them, I did not allow it to come unannounced. The punishment is even at the door. The man beside me spoke again, look up. When I looked, I could not see, watch this, watch this. I could not see the sky because there were so many planes. 
I better read that again. Look up. When I looked up, I could not see the sky because there were so many planes. So if there's only one nuclear bomb per plane, and there's probably not, some of those planes probably carry 50, maybe 100 of them. How many? How many is that hitting America? That's a bunch. Then the man said to me, thank the Lord for what he has shown you. Then I began to pray and thank God. While I was praying, I heard a prophecy of myself. Get ready and sanctify yourself. You and yours, that you and yours may not, ta- may not take part in the trials that are ahead. This is why I've come to show you these things. I have shown you what is to come in a short while. All that you have seen is at the door, because the sin and wickedness have reached the throne of God's mercy. Then there was great lightning and thunder. I fell to the ground and was awakened from my sleep. The first of three final messages given to Dimitri Dudem in 1997, this one's called the lawless one. I have spoken to you as a father speaks to his own children. I have shown you what will be, that you may prepare your hearts and strengthen your spirits for the day of battle. Dark days are soon coming upon the earth, days of mourning and great sadness. I tarry for those who seek me with a pure heart. I give strength to those who seek me continually. The lawless one has been prepared and he is ready to reveal himself. He awaits his release. He will come with a lying tongue and deceiving words. I will protect my own and I will deliver them even out of the clutches of the enemy. Those that would be strong unto the end, those that would be called to be living testimonies. What? What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's read that again. Those that will be strong until the end, those that will be called to be living testimonies for my name's sake will receive the crown of life. What's he talking about? What's he talking about? Read it. What's he saying? Those that will be strong until the end, in other words, not deny him, those that will be called to be living testimonies for my name's sake will receive the crown of life. Remember, Revelation says, be faithful unto death and I'll give thee a crown of life. In other words, some people that are very close to the Lord will get the ultimate blessing and they're able to give their life for the name of Jesus. And I probably should say, if you have not already, you might read the Fox's Book of Martyrs because in that book it says that when someone is giving their life for the Lord, they do not feel the pain. They talk about people that were burned at the stakes and they were singing praises. And then as the knots finally got burned, they would lift their hands, praising the Lord, singing praises to the Lord. They weren't feeling the thing. They were burned at the stake, weren't feeling the thing. Kim Peters, when he said that the curved scimitar sword cut his head off, he said, as soon as the sword touched my skin, I was gone. Never felt pain. Let righteousness be your banner. My word be your guide. Be rooted in truth. As the dawn comes to chase away the night, so will the darkness rule only for a lot of time. Be strong in the knowledge that I protect and watch over all who are mine. Amen. Fight the good fight, Dimitri, April 1997. I was on a large plane. It seemed to go on forever. I couldn't see the edges, but I know I was somewhere very high. The clouds seemed so close to where I stood that if I reached out, I could see this plain covered with beautiful grass. There was all the same height, and the sky was calm and beautiful, and there was feeling of peace in this place. There were no buildings, no trees, flowers, just the earth and the sky. As I continued to look around, I saw a change in the sky, and the clouds began to roll to the sides, and I saw a city come down from the clouds. It continued to descend until it reached the ground where I stood. I was amazed by what I saw, and I began to study it intently. I've traveled the world a lot, but I have never seen anything like what I was seeing. The entire structure was so beautiful that it took your breath away. It was all white, and it shone so brightly that one could barely look at it. It was so large that if I stood at one corner and looked to see the other end, I couldn't see it. As I was trying to find an entrance to this place, I studied the walls and couldn't make out what they were built from. It seemed that it was built as a whole, all from one giant mass, no bricks, No cracks in the walls, no mortar. As I stood to my left, there was a building that was very tall. And smaller buildings continued along the wall. It seemed like the entire city was under one roof. Although the buildings were different, they were connected between themselves. 
as I continued to look, I saw the stairs that led to an entrance, and they shone brighter than anything I'd ever seen. They were gigantic, as was the wall that surrounded the city. No one would be able to force their way into this place. I don't know what sort of material it was made from, but I got the impression that those inside could see out. Wanting to find out what waited inside, I began to climb the stairs. I didn't get very far because I heard a powerful voice which drowned it out everything saying, stop. Even if I had wanted to continue walking, I could not. It was as if I was paralyzed. The voice said, tell my people that their worship toward me must not be out of fear, but out of love. We need to hear that. I better read that again. Tell my people that their worship toward me must not be out of fear, but out of love. Of what use will it be to them if I would tell them when the final hour will strike? What they must do is worship wholeheartedly. I've already sent them a guide. They have my word. In my word, it has already been revealed that I will come as a thief in the night. Tell them that concern over tomorrow should not be found in them. They must be faithful and fight the good fight. Love me as I have loved them, living in love. Behold, destruction is fast approaching but I will not hesitate to be protector for my chosen. Those that sow mercy shall receive mercy from me. Tell my people not to worry about the seasons, but meditate on how they will stand before me. Urge them to prepare for the day when I will show my power. Look, when I turned, I saw a small child that was trying to climb the chair, the stairs. He tried, but he was too small. He could never make it to the next step. His laughter, however, echoed throughout like a bell. Even though he kept falling, he showed no sign of sadness, but just kept trying. Did I not leave you this parable as an example? Then everything disappeared. In other words, we're supposed to continue to try to get closer to Jesus. The mountain. This is one of my favorite ones. Dimitri told me this uh, one of the first few days when I met him. See, as we'd drive around, I would take him to these various, uh, I mean, the first two weeks when he got here, when, when we got to, I was actually living in Lawrence, Kansas at the time. This would be 1988. And I set him up. Uh, people called me, really. It was nothing I did. But he's spoke in like six or seven churches, a TV station, six or seven radio stations, all in two weeks. He later said busiest two weeks of his life. So as I'm driving him around, he would start telling me these things, these things that we're reading here. He told me this one, too. June 1989, as I was staying with a pastor in Oregon, I woke about 1 a.m. Wait a minute. Let me think. 1988. He said he had this in 1989. Well, he came to visit me first in March of 1988, but then he came back again in 1989. So, And I drove him around a bunch of other places there, too. So probably it was in 1989. I was staying with the pastor in Oregon. I woke about 1 a.m. in the morning, and I could not find Danny. That was the hired interpreter. I woke up the pastor. Neither of us could find him. So I told the pastor to go to his room and pray, and I would also pray. We asked God to show us where Danny was. God revealed to me that he was at a bar, showed him a vision. I cried out to God, and I said, God, I cannot work with a wicked man. So I went down and told the pastor that God revealed to me Danny was at a bar. As we were talking, so he's in the middle of a conversation, okay? As we were talking, God gave me a vision. I saw trees and houses and the ground all explode into fire. I heard a voice saying, Dimitri, quick, get on the mountain or you'll burn. I looked and I saw a very tall mountain. The bottom half had trees and the top top half was bare. I started climbing the mountain. I called out for my family. Michael was having a hard time climbing the mountain. And I went and help, helped him up the mountain. The climb was very difficult. I noticed that from out of the fire came all kinds of people trying to climb the mountain. The children ran up the mountain quickly and easily. Some of the people could climb using the trees were in the lower one half. But when there were no trees, they fell back into the fire. The climb was difficult. At times, we had to crawl and pull each other up. We finally reached the top of the mountain. An angel came to me and said, come with me. I will show you what it would be like when America burns. He took me back down to the pastor's back backyard of the pastor's house. All around me, the trees and the houses were exploding. Fire erupted from the ground. The natural gas pipes exploded. 
He said, this is what it will be like when America burns. Then he continued, do you know what the mountain is? No, the mountain is Jesus. Then he asked, do you know why the children ran up the mountain so fast? No. He answered, because they have no sin. Then he said, do you know who the people were who only made it halfway up the mountain but fell back into the fire? No. They are the people who backslid away from Jesus. Then the vision ended. I was back in front of the pasture once again. Hmm. When will it happen? So many people were asking me, when will it happen? When will it happen? When will the bombs hit America? Dimitri prayed and said, God, what do you want me to tell them when they ask when it'll happen? That night the angel came and touched me on the hand and said, Dimitri, wake up, sit up, get your Bible. Tell them to read Hosea 4.6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, like America has, so they sinned against me, like America has. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people. In other words, they like the sin, okay? They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be, like people, like priests. I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. Turn to Hosea 6.1. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain and the former rain under the earth. You tell the people of America that one day, is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. If they will repent and turn back to God, they will make it to the 2,000-year mark. If they do not, they will not make it to the 2,000th year. Now, I cannot tell you how many times I've tried to figure this out. Time of, <laughs> I think I've about got it figured out. All of a sudden, new pieces of information come. I don't think that, that the way to understand this is calculating numbers. I think we've got to look at, matter of fact, I made a program that will air Monday. That would be a very good program to watch because I explain it there. Um, it's not talking about the year 2000. If Jesus was crucified in 32 AD, and that by a lot of sources, a lot of reasons, a lot of ways, that's probably accurate. That would put that the 2,000 years would be talking about 32 AD plus 2,000, which would be putting it at 2032. But it didn't say that Jesus comes at the 2,000 year. It just said they'll make it the 2,000 year mark, meaning if it's 2,000 years to 2030, 2032, probably Jesus comes before then, meaning that they'll make it into eternity. So he's not telling us exactly, but he's just telling us in general, clean your act up. Oh, let, let's go on to the next one. 1989, Dimitri Dudeman, the star. I just returned home from Wisconsin. Every time I prayed, I, I saw a very big star would appear in front of me. This happened about 16 times in a period of a few days. Every time the star would appear, it would make a great noise. And I would always tremble for a few seconds. It would stand up high, and then at a great speed, it would fall to the ground. I prayed together with my family for an answer. After the 16th time, the answer came. I heard a voice say, do you see the star? It represents America. This is how fast the fall of America will be, as fast as the star fell. Then the voice said, I love the Christians in this country because all the good deeds they have done and for the help they have given those in need. I bless this country so far, so other people would be fed from it. The voice also said, there will be a time of preparation for the people. The ones who need to repent should do it now, before it is too late. The time without trouble will last until the total number of chosen is fulfilled. Remember, Jerusalem will be trodden down until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's what he's talking about. 
May 1991, Flicker of Light. In my dream, the side of the moon appeared in the heavens a more powerful intensity than I'd ever seen before. Suddenly, two men came out of the light, one out of the sun, one out of the moon. The one in the sun began to speak. I am the son of righteousness, and I will soon come to judge the world. Get up and work now while it is still day. For the night is soon coming when no longer, when you no longer should be able to work. Now let's talk about that a minute. What's he talking about? Okay, so what is he talking about able to work? He's talking about a time when we're able to witness the gospel. So when is it that the gospel is shut off when we can't talk about Jesus anymore? For sure, somewhere near on, near on or around the middle of the tribulation. But for sure, um, if I'm right in my understanding, when Jesus comes for first fruits, if I get off that, that'll get me off of what we're doing tonight. But when we go to the on Pentecost, when we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is about four months before Armageddon for the final. So to me, I think it's talking about probably, hopefully, the last four months. But probably it's talking about the last three and a half years, the Great Tribulation. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. His power was given to him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed God, blasphemed his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. There's a time coming when a great Christian purge is coming. That's what he's talking about. Let's go on. Get up and work now while it is still day, for night is soon coming when you no longer should be able to work. I want to strengthen you, for I still have work for you to do. Look to your left. When I looked to my left, I saw a black cloud furiously approaching with lightning and thunder booming out of it. It covered the horizon and soon covered the sun and the moon. A heavy smell filled the place where I stood, making it very difficult to breathe. Well, what can this horrible stench be, I asked. This is how nuclear fallout smells. You remember Dana Coverstone? Remember he kept seeing this yellow snow-like stuff every place? Fallout. Nuclear fallout. In other words, when the nuclear bomb, be it a small one or a large one, when it goes off, sends that 200 mile an hour wind, but then it also, when that wind comes back in, it sucks it up. And so it sucks up radiation and all kinds of powder and sand and up into the air, and it's all radiated. Well, it has a smell to it. And it's got, a, you know, what comes up has come back down. When it comes back down, it's all radi radiated and it's like, powder and it falls on everything and that's if you have them and and i do and prophecy club has them that's when you should start taking your potassium iodate pills because you cannot avoid it because it, it gets in your water your food it's in the air this radiation is every place well it, it absorbs through the skin so your body absorbs the radiation and it goes to your thyroid and it kills your thyroid. But by taking potassium iodide or iodate, either one, those little pills that socks your thyroid full of good iodine so that the bad radioactive iodine is not easily absorbed. And for about 20 bucks, 35, I don't know, 35, I don't know, maybe even $40 now, who knows, um, save a person's life. It's a simple, easy fix. Prophecyclub.com. Pretty hard to find them now. I don't even know if we even have them. If we do, we probably don't have very, very many. This is how nuclear fallout smells, he replied. Then suddenly the darkness and the cloud, far away from where I stood, there was a little flicker of light. The voice in the sun said, walk toward the light. As I began to follow the flicker of light, all my family was suddenly with me. We kept talking on a very narrow path, and for a very long time, an exhausting trip, we arrived at the bank with a big body of water. Hang on. I was just impressed to say something. By now, you're starting to get the spirit that was in Dimitri Dudeman after reading a lot of this. Well, of course, I had him in my home for two weeks. I went to his home. I had him in my home two different occasions. We put him on, I don't know, 30, 40 city speaking tour. So I spent a lot of time with him. And I've read and read and read all of his stuff. Um, after a while, you get to feel the spirit 
of what it sounds like and feels like when God is really talking. And then, of course, we've done 74 crusades, three-day crusades, and 70 of those were teaching people how to hear the voice of God. The first early baby steps of giving personal prophecies. I've given 5,000 personal prophecies, as likewise Leslie has. And you start learning what the voice of God sounds like. Now, I say that because out on the Internet now, there's some really big websites that a lot of people think are really hearing from God, and they're not hearing from God. If it doesn't line up with the spirit you hear behind this, toss it. It's, I mean, people send me these links, and thank you for sending me these links. But I go there. I, I mean, as soon as I hear it, it's, I, I cannot move my mouse fast enough up to the little X to delete it. It's not God. So I'm just telling you, be very careful about what you listen to on the Internet. These days, there's a lot of serpents, and they sound like God, but they're not God. Okay, let's keep going. As I began to follow the flicker of light, all my family moved suddenly with me. We kept walking a very narrow path, and for after a very long time, exhausting trip, we arrived at the bank of a big body of water. This is important. Again, the voice spoke and said, you must get across the water. I began trouble because there was no way we could cross. Then something like a ski lift appeared before us, and the voice spoke again, get on. Before we ever had time to think, we arrived on the other side of the body of water. The voice spoke, spoke to me again and said, do not be quiet. Tell the people that the time is very short and the trouble will come upon the earth. I will still allow time for the souls of those who I want to, who I want to save. Tell the people that I am a jealous God and I want them all for me. Tell them to pray more and worship me with all of their hearts in holiness and cleanness. And that's one of the things prophets do. That's one of the things that the Spirit of God does. Tell people, clean up, clean up, clean up. That's what Prophet Leslie does. She always tells them, she, what, 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 32 DVDs she's made, eight books, and uh, what it takes to be a prophet. Because a real prophet is the police officer of the church. A real prophet brings correction to the church. Now let's go to another one. January 23rd, 1992. It was late. After prayer, I went to sleep. In my dream, I heard a loud noise. I began to look around. When I looked up, I saw a big star in the sky, but its tips were bent. Suddenly, I heard the sound of hoofbeats, which were getting closer and closer. When I looked where the noise was coming from, I saw four horses pulling an old-fashioned chariot. In the chariot were four men that were armed with very heavy artillery, and they began to shoot at the star. The star began to burn. Then it fell from the sky. I woke up and told Mike the dream, and he asked me what it meant. When I told him, I didn't know. He told me to pray, and if it was of God, he would let me dream it again. I prayed and again tried to fall asleep. I was nodding off when, I, again, I heard the noise, saw the star with its bent tips. Again, I heard the hoof beats, but this time, when I looked up, there were six horses, and six men were in a chariot. All of them had masks on, and they were armed. Again, they began to shoot at the star. The star began to burn again and fell. Frightened, I woke up, being troubled again. I prayed and again asked God for an explanation. I couldn't fall asleep for a few hours, but when I did, the same dream came again. That's the third time. This time, the noise was even greater. Again, the star appeared with the same crooked tips. Again, I heard the horses. This time, there weren't four or six. There were eight horses. Now, let me explain what I believe he's talking about. So when the attack comes on America, it's not just four nations, not just six nations, it's eight nations. And they come upon us because we are the Lone Star as the Texas flag. We are the nation that represents, the star represents us. Star represents goodness, star represents Jesus, but we have burnt, bent tips because we have sin on us. So eight nations is what attack us and take us out. The eight men were in the chariot. Again, they fired upon the star, it fell. This time when it hit the ground, it blew up. In the same place where the star used to be, appeared a man dressed in white. He said, the star represents America. The reason the tips are crooked is because America has fallen away from the truth and the way of God. Just like what is happening to Trump. This should never happen in our judicial system, okay? The eight horses 
And the men of the chariot represent eight kings that will rise up against America and will overcome her. The dream ended. That same morning during my prayer time, I saw a red flag with light blue and white in the left corner. It was bleeding. May God keep us awake and ready. Chris Reed in one of his dreams said he saw a, a flag kind of like that. And, and it, he said it was a, new, a renewed nation. So it sounds to me like maybe they saw the same flag. Not sure, though. July 4th, 1991. On the morning of July 4th, 1991, I was counseled by the Holy Spirit who told me this. What I ask of my people is to keep peace in their hearts. I do allow trials to come over them. This is to keep them humble. Do not wait, but try to, keep, try to get closer to God. For the hard days are at hand when a powerful darkness will set over this country. Wickedness and sin have reached their end, and the Almighty and the Righteous One will take revenge on the sin. Be holy and draw near the Lord with your life and clean heart, with fasting and praying, so I can spare you in the days of trouble. The day of the ones, Holy One's terrible wrath is getting close, and everyone will receive their just reward, for God is a righteous judge. Do not be lazy, but come before me on your knees more often. Afterwards, the Spirit of God encouraged me, telling me to be strengthened because my fight will get harder still, but God will make me more victorious over everything. Man Holding the Moon, June 3rd, 1992. I wanted to read one. Man, it's, it's about the, the Black Knight. I hope we get to that, but I thought it was like the first one. But I know I didn't skip any. We'll keep going. I dreamed I was on the shore of a river. <laughs> this is a real good one here. When I looked in the water, I saw it was very dirty. I wanted to catch fish. It means he wants to win souls. But I couldn't because the waters were so muddy, because there's so much garbage out there and people don't want to listen. I mean, you know, they get on Christian TV and all they do is beg for money. And it's, it's ruined the name of Jesus. And people don't want to be Christians anymore. It's not popular to be Christians. I wanted to catch fish, but I could because the waters were so muddy. I asked myself, well, how can I catch fish from this river? There is no clean water anywhere to clean up afterwards. When I looked further up the river, I saw a large patch of clean water coming, meaning a great revival. When it came by, I checked the clean water with my hand to see if it was cold. When I felt the water, a powerful ray of light came down surrounding me. In other words, the great revival, the great power of God. The light enabled me to see the fish. I was surprised to see how many fish there were. When I looked up, I saw the light was coming from the moon. When I looked closer, I saw the man in the moon. His face was so shiny, I couldn't look long. I looked back into the water, and a voice spoke to me saying, Start fishing now, because the time is very short. Soon there will be no more opportunity to fish. That's kind of what he was saying in the early one. The voice sounds so close, it frightened me. The man looked so far away, but the voice was close, and I looked up, and I heard the voice again. The man said, the ray of light that you see is my voice. Then he said, look how many fish are before you. When I looked down, I saw many more fish than before. The man said the second time, catch them now, fish now, fish while you can. For a short time, the fishing shall be over. When I looked back toward the moon, it had changed into a red arc. Like a rainbow, the man was holding it in his hand by a corner. He said to me, see this moon? Soon this light will go out. I asked, where am I? Well, the moon goes out with the sun, moon, the stars go out. And that is in the fifth, fourth, the fourth vial. Oh, man. Man, I want to get to that uh, blackbird. That's not. Hmm. Ah, okay. We got to get this one. This is one I wanted to get to. May 7th, get the book. Okay, get the book. It's got all these in the book and a lot more. May 7th, 1993. One night while in Oregon, I dreamed the sky was getting dark. Then suddenly it turned pitch black. It was as if the whole world had gone dark at that moment. All the people were in a frenzy. They became disoriented and some were even screaming. For some time, we heard the sound of an army approaching. Soon we saw them coming out of the black midst, all dressed in black except one. That one seemed to be their leader. He was dressed in a red robe with a thick black belt over his waist. On his head, he had a sign. As I looked, I saw that in his hand, 
He held the same kind of sharp spear as everyone else in his army. I am Lucifer, he exclaimed. I am the king of this world. I have come to make war against the Christians. It looked as though all the Christians were huddled together in one big group. Some began to cry when they heard this. Others began to tremble, while some just stood without saying anything. Lucifer continued to speak. All of those that want to fight against my army and think they can be victorious, go to the right. Those that fear me, go to the left. Only about a quarter of the group stepped to the right. All the others went to the left. Then Lucifer ordered his army, destroy those on the right. The army began to advance and quickly surrounded the Christians on the right. As they began to close in on us, a powerful light appeared and encircled us. Then an angel of the Lord spoke and said, take out your swords and fight. Defend yourself and be victorious over the enemy. What swords? A man in the group asked. The word of the Lord is your sword, the angel answered. When we understood what the angel meant, we began to quote verses from the Bible. Then suddenly, as if we were one voice, we began to sing a song. Our voices thundered so loudly that the dark army began to retreat in fear. They didn't have the courage to come against us anymore. Lucifer then, filled with rage, turned to those on the left. You, who all of your life have been trying to please two masters. Because you could not stand against me, I have the power to destroy you. He then ordered his army to attack. It was a total massacre. The ones on the left. I had to look down at my phone. Hang on. The ones on the left could not defend themselves. One by one, they all fell. This killing seemed to go on for a long time. After a while, we could actually smell the stench of the dead. Why could they not be protected also, someone asked. The angel answered, because all of their life, they have been lukewarm. Because of their hypocrisy, the true church has been blasphemed. They have brought disrespect to the word of God. They were not clean. As we continued to look, we saw the sun coming over the horizon. The black clouds began to break up. Then they disappeared. Only one was left on which Lucifer and his army stood. Lucifer looked at me, shaking his fists, and said, I will destroy you, even if I have to throw my spear at you from here. Then the cloud disappeared too. As I looked around, I began to see faces I recognized among our group. I saw a pastor from Bellflower, another from Indiana, one from Michigan, as well as many of my other American friends. This strengthened me greatly. Then I awoke, and the first thought that came to my mind was I awoke from what this being the last fight of the devil against the church. If we remain faithful, we will be victorious. Now let me jump back up. and Yeah, I think I have. Here we go. Maybe the last one. December 12th, 1982, Dimitri. In my dream, it was as if I was in front of an apartment building where I live. As I was standing and looking at the overhead clouds, a blackbird of gigantic size suddenly appeared. It was coming toward the ground with great speed. As it approached, it spread its wings. When I looked, I saw that something was written on the wings. It said, Power has been given to me to be able to come against the Christians in a short time. On the beak of the bird was written, I want to make war against the true Christians, those that serve God with their hearts and their lives and their actions, not only in name. We'll see if they will be able to stand against me. We'll see. I'm a warrior. I fight against Christ. This bird of indescribable size was never calm. It soared up and down. As I watched, I was able to see how terrifying and mean it looked. Suddenly, it dropped a ribbon which said, It will not be long before I will declare war against the Christians. I myself will fight with all my strength. And, it began to, it, and again, it began to soar upwards. Then suddenly, a cloud of rain, thunder, and lightning appeared. A lightning bolt hit the bird, and it fell to the earth. To me, it seemed dead. Feeling great joy that it was dead, I went to study it more closely. As I was looking at it, it raised its head and said, Do you think I'm really dead? I just played play dead because I didn't want Christ to be mad at me. In a short time, though, I will be allowed to fight against the Christians in this country. Then it shot up like an arrow and circled over me once. It dropped a letter that was written in English. I gave the letter to my daughter to read, and it said, I was given power on earth to fight against all those that serve, and do the work of God. 
I have succeeded in destroying some, and others I have taken prisoner. In a short time, I will be allowed to fight against you and others like you. Signed, Lucifer. Terrified and troubled by my dream, I woke up and told my family. Now I'm also telling you. Okay, one more. I like this. You know, I am uh, personally very cautious of people that say that they had, not not people, but I'm cautious of people. I'm cautious of the words. When they say they had a word from the Lord, I'm very cautious. Most of them I don't accept. Most of them just have too much flesh. This one I accept. November 8th, 1980 and 1992, a revelation. It's a prophecy. Dark days and, and days of sadness are soon coming, says the Lord. Not long will pass, and the one who is to come will come, and he will not tarry. The days are coming when the kings of the earth will wail loudly. The evil that you see being loud over Romania, you can see now why I grade that out. It's not necessary to read. Because the people in the greed have become corrupt. They have started to protect, practice wickedness and, are, and they are proud. Even some of my people who have chosen have given in to sinful things, believing they are fighting only for themselves. This is why I, the Lord, have allowed and do allow the hardships. Do not be astonished by what you see, for the poverty and hunger will grow. The hardships will be even greater. But it will not be allowed for long because the prayers of the hungry children have reached me. Everything is prepared for the killing, the battles and the crimes. The plunders and the troubles are close and shall come to pass in a short time. After this, things will change in, a, in such a way that you did not think possible. Those that are haughty, I, the Lord, will humble. You will receive the same cup that you give. If you are poor or if you are a king, God is no respecter of persons. Tell my people to be prepared and be careful, says the Lord. For everything I've decided will happen. Do not say in your hearts that the Lord has said many things that have not happened yet, because all things are decided by me and everything has its appointed time. Draw closer to the Lord, your God, and cease doing evil things that I may give you the victory. I, the Lord, will work in ways that you cannot even imagine. Be holy. The sin of the great whore has spread throughout the world. The stench of her sin has reached me. And it will not be long until I raise the whole Arab world, the Russians and other countries against her, that they may destroy her. So, I'm going to conclude there. Uh, okay, well, I don't see any questions that have been popped into the private chat area by my son, Sean, that is, that is, uh, I don't know, monitoring, monitoring the problem. Okay, so we're at 7.32, two minutes over. Uh, and let me do a couple of announcements. Yes, the, the, we're not going to have any Bible studies during June. So that means that, let me look at my calendar here. We'll have one more. So next Friday will be the last one, and then we'll start them up uh, again in July. Probably, let me look at that date here. Let's see what that date is here. July, the, yeah, probably it will be July. Let me get to July here. I don't know. This calendar is confusing. I don't want to give you a date and then it'll be wrong. So I'll just skip it. Okay. So somebody said that they wanted to know my opinion on Israel. Well, I have said that many times. As a matter of fact, the program Monday says it again, but, um, I don't think this, I don't think, now that could change. I could be wrong. God hasn't told me. But it, it does not appear that this is the year for the internal revolution. But God has given us seven signs to let us know. And I think the signs have a high probability of starting this year. And I also think that what is probably going to happen from this Israel-Gaza war is Israel is going to see that they, that they, uh, that they cannot win especially with this situation with Iran and someplace in there with America twisting her arm, probably they'll give the Palestinians a state. And then of course the bad things happen to America, but there's, there's some big things that go along with that. It could very well be that the, 
agreement, um, the covenant, I'll say it that way, the covenant gives, that gives the Palestinians a state could be the covenant of Daniel 9, 27. And he confirms the covenant with many for one week. The covenant could be the covenant that then a year or two or three, whatever time it is, when the Antichrist comes along, he may confirm that covenant. So the covenant that gives the Palestinians a state could be the covenant that the Antichrist comes along and confirms. Then also, it could also give the third beast. So you can't have the fourth beast, which is world government, until you have the third beast, Daniel chapter 7. The third beast is a leopard, which is Muslims. And the, the leopard has four wings of a fowl. Each of those wings has a leader. Right now, we do not have four nations that work together as one unit. We don't have a caliphate. We don't have the third beast. You can't have the fourth beast, which is world government, until you have the third beast. And it is very likely that what is going to come out of the covenant that gives the Palestinians a state, which if it is this year, and if it is Omer ushers in the Palestinian state, it will probably happen sometime before June 14th of 2024. Now, God did not say, tell me this is year. I don't know that this is the year. And I do not know that America is going to force Israel to give the Palestinians a state. It could be that we'll see Omer ushers in Palestinian state, and then we don't see the, the earthquake because America didn't do the twisting. Israel just decided to just give the Palestinians a state. We, don't, we won't know until we see this. But again, the audible voice of God said to me, June 14th, 2008, Stan, when those prophecies I gave your wife begin to come to pass, people from all directions will begin to turn and listen to your ministry. So I think we're very, very close on some very, very big things. And Israel is God's time clock. If you want to know what time it is, you want to know what God is doing, you look at Israel. Israel is God's apple is vi. Israel has an everlasting covenant. The Bible says that, you know, as long as you see the sun, moon, and the stars, they're going to be in Israel. So America didn't have that guarantee. Iran didn't have that guarantee. Russia didn't have that guarantee. Only Israel has an everlasting covenant with God. So it doesn't make any difference, Bob. There's a scripture I read on the air uh, that though the whole world comes down to attack Israel, they will not be successful. Jesus will stop it. So really and truly, Israel is the biggest, most powerful army in the world because God is standing behind them. So I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be real interesting. I think I popped up with a question here. All right, let's see. Why does nobody recommend moving out of the United States? That's a good question. I believe that when the time comes, no one is going to have to tell us to go. I think that... I think the Spirit of God is going to speak to the hearts of a lot of Christians. Now, here's kind of what I see. I think that... Well, I'll put it this way without putting a date on it. I believe that when... Remember, Stan, I will give you the money to drill the well in Israel. Okay, now I have to give you a disclaimer every time I say that. We cannot guarantee where we're going to get the money drilled for or hit the well in Israel. So when I get the money drilled the well in Israel, when we go over and hit the oil in Israel, uh, one of the things I want to do is to buy an airline. I didn't say an airplane, I said an airline. And what God has spoken in my heart in several different ways and take me a while to explain it. I won't go into that tonight. Um, I believe he has directed me to fly Christians and Jews back to Israel. So I think that there will be a time, if you follow Prophecy Club, yeah, I, th I think that the Spirit of God is, is going to be telling, just, just like Spirit of God spoke to people in the days before Columbus to begin to come to America. And he spoke to the hearts of Christians to get out of Europe and to come to America. Well, he's also going to do that again. He'll speak to the hearts of people, not just in America, but Christians and Jews from around the world to move to Israel. There'll be a great mass of people moving to Israel because It'll be the last place on earth that has any safety. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Stan. Wait a minute. Isn't that where the Antichrist is? Yes. <laughs> Take me a while to explain to you, but it's also probably going to be the safest place. I believe God has, has directed me and shown me where to build a land of unwalled villages uh, according to uh, 
um, um, as Ezekiel 38, 11, the land of unwalled villages, them that are at rest, who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates, and the desolate places that are now inhabited, and the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods and dwell in the midst of the land. Unwalled villages. I believe that uh, he's directed me, and among others, I don't think I can be the only one doing this. It's not just the Stan Johnson show, and there's nothing special about me. I'm just, I'm just like you. You're going to do what God is directing you to do, and I'll be doing what God is directing me to do. And when we all get to heaven, we all want to hear the same phrase, well done, thou good and faithful servant. <coughs> That's all that matters. That word, you know, nothing special here. Okay. Uh, I think that 2024 is going to be a year of fulfillment of Bible prophecy like I've not seen in my 70 years on this planet. Okay, so we are 10 minutes afterwards. I'm going to go ahead and close it there. Wow, we have 175 people live. That's pretty good. God bless you. Let me let me pray for you. Lord, it is a privilege and an honor to be speaking to your people and to be serving you. It's a privilege and honor for all of us to have our name written in the book of life. And Lord, I look forward to the time when we're all in eternity and we can rejoice and fellowship together. Lord, I ask you to use these people in your service. Speak to their hearts. Give them dreams and visions and angel visits. Give them the spirit of revelation that they can understand the revelations and also that they can teach and be able to give an answer to those people that are so desperate to understand the last days. Help them to be able to discern truth from error and not fall to the tricks and traps of the devil, not fall to the false prophets that are speaking around the globe so readily now, but instead, Lord, lead them in the paths of righteousness, make their lamp shine bright, be the lamp under their feet, the light into the path, be that voice behind them speaking, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. That they would all hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.